Hello, Pokemon trainers. Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet video here on iStarly TV. Today, I'm going to show you the best ways to EV train your Pokemon in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. In a lot of ways, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet have made EV training easier than ever before, though admittedly, in a lot of other ways, they've taken away a few things. First of all, the Let's Go Auto Battle feature does not work for EV training. That's what I'm hearing. So if you see a swarm of Pokemon that give attack EVs and you throw out your Pokemon and you think you're going to EV train it by defeating all of them, unfortunately, you will not get any EVs. So keep that in mind. Auto battling in Let's Go mode does not give any EVs. So the first thing that I think we want to do here, if we're going <laughs> to, what the heck is going on? <laughs> uh, bro, you good? Okay, uh, let's just go ahead and get right into it. So he's EV trained, by the way, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> um, the first thing that we're going to want to do is actually pick up the power items, which are located in Mesa Gosa, immediately once you get to this town. So the place that you can get the power items is right here in the Delibird presence. So I'm just right here. I'm just going to kind of quickly fly there as quickly as I can. And now I'm here at this shop, AKA this menu, because you can't literally go in this shop. It just opens up a menu for you. And you can you can ch check get general goods. And then if you go to the very bottom, you have the power items. Now these are items that are extremely useful for EV training because each one, first of all, when your Pokemon holds it, their speed stat is cut in half, so they move slower. However, the amount of effort values or EVs that they get are increased by eight when they are holding this item. And it tells you which stat that they boost. So it says, the second sentence here, um, holding this weight reduces a Pokemon's speed in battle, but allows its HP stat to grow more quickly. So power weight is for HP, power bracer is for attack, power belt is for defense, power lens is for special attack, power band is for special defense, and power anklet are for speed. So obviously you wanna buy the ones that you're gonna need if you're early in the game, you're not gonna have that much money. You honestly might have enough money to buy like one, two, maybe three of these. But obviously as you get later in the game, you will have enough. I'm also, I also have a video on my channel. I'll post uh, a link up here that shows you how to get the amulet coin in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And obviously that's gonna be a great tool. If you have the amulet coin, you'll get double money from battles. So that'll give you a, you know, more money to buy these, these EV training items with. So those are the power items and you're gonna need those like I said, if a Pokemon is holding one of those items, they will get an additional eight EVs in the stat that they're that the item is for um, each time they defeat a Pokemon in battle, not in the auto battle. So make sure you pick up the power items that you need. Then we're going to head over here for the next part of the video where I'm going to show you the other items that are useful, which are the vitamins in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And these are located in the Chansey Supply Store in Mesa Gosa. I think they might also be available in other Chansey Supply Stores across Paldea, but at least in Mesa Gosa, that's a town that you have access to right away. However, I believe the power, or I'm sorry, I believe the vitamins are only purchasable from Chansey Supply. I've heard once you get three gym badges. So I have, I've beaten all the gyms in this account. And so I, I obviously have access to these, but uh, in my other account, I've only have, I only have two badges and I don't have these yet. So anyways, you're gonna, I'm gonna fly here and go to the Chansey Supply Store. All right, and from this Pokemon Center, you're just gonna go ahead and dash on over here, past this little shop right here. And then the Chansey Supply is right here. So we're gonna walk into the menu And there are the vitamins. Now, they made the change in Pokemon Sword and Shield to where you could give your Pokemon as many vitamins as you want until you max out their EVs. So the maximum amount of EVs a Pokemon can have in any given stat is 252, which means you need 25 of these if you want to max out one of your Pokemon stats, plus two EVs after that. Um, you, could, you could give them 26 of these and it would give them the 252. You would just kind of technically waste those eight e those eight remaining EVs. But again, if you have a lot of money, this is easily the fastest way to EV train your Pokemon in the game. If you have, you know, $260,000, which is a lot of money. If you have $260,000 though, you can max out one of your Pokemon stats. If you have $520,000, you can max out two of your Pokemon stats and basically completely EV train them in a matter of seconds. 
Again, however, that is going to take a lot of money. And even if you have the amulet coin, it's probably still a tall order to ask for. So these items can also be found, I think in raids, but also just scattered on the ground when you kind of pick up hidden items. So there are a few ways to obtain these. But uh, like I said, if you have the money for it, you can actually kind of get these very quickly. Another way to get a lot of money in addition to the amulet coin is by just doing a lot of raids. If you do like a lot of three and four star raids, you also get a lot of rewards uh, like stardust and stuff like that. Items that you can sell for money. So those are other options. This is the fastest way to EV train, but also just absolutely the most expensive as well. So uh, it's good to know about though as well. So now I'm actually going to show you the best places to EV train your Pokemon. And I'm actually, while, while I'm here, I'm going to start by actually flying to the very first uh, area of the game. I, I guess we'll go to the lighthouse. Um, I'm going to fly to the lighthouse here, which again, this is the area that you pretty much start out in, in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And I, I'm going to keep talking while I'm, while I'm flying there. So Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are truly open world games and the spawns of certain Pokemon are kind of not traditional. Um, and so basically my point here is there are, I'm gonna tell you the areas that I've found useful for EV training my Pokemon in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. But at the end of the day, if you, I'm gonna leave a link actually to the Pokedex from Cerebi.net in the description if you want to check it out. If you go to a Pokemon's page, you can check what EVs they give, and that'll help you kind of determine, like if you found a place where a certain Pokemon spawns very often, and it gives a certain EVs that you need, you can kind of farm there and just EV train there. So these are my suggestions for places to EV train your Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet, but there are probably plenty of other places that are just as good. So keep that in mind, please. Anyways, I wanted to start here because actually the very first path that you go to in the game actually has just about everything you need for EV training. So this is actually useful for anyone if you can basically, again, because you can buy those power items as soon as you get to Mesa Gosa, basically anyone can EV train their Pokemon at whatever point they want in the games. So I'm gonna start by going, this is the path that you walk. I know I'm going ba ba basically backwards, the opposite way, but this is the path that you walk in the very beginning of the game, right after you choose your starter, you kind of walk up this path and while I'm walking down it to get to the lighthouse. And then from the lighthouse, you get to kind of that first Pokemon center with Nimona. <laughs> and this little Jong wants to be my friend. He actually looks kind of big. Um, maybe I'll catch him at some point. But anyways, so in this path, you can actually catch Pokemon that give you every different EV type or every different EV stat, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna kind of go through the list here. If, and, and basically if you are early on in the game, if you, because, so the reason I'm doing this is because I might suggest a place, I might say, oh, this place right here is the best place to EV train, but maybe if you haven't unlocked that place, you won't be able to get there yet. So this is a, a place that everyone has access to right away. And it basically has Pokemon that yield every single stat. So, so for HP, knock out a bunch of Lechonks. Lechonk is very common in this route, just as all the other Pokemon are. And so, yeah, just knock out a bunch of Lechonks and make sure your Pokemon is holding the power weight item, which I believe is the one that gives HP. And for every Lechonk that you knock out, you will get nine HP EVs. I, I actually don't have the power weight myself, but um, make sure to give it to the Pokemon that you want to EV train in HP and knock out nine Lechonk. Now, another thing I didn't mention is because of the ex the permanent experience share in this game, you can actually have the Pokemon that you're EV training like in the late, like in the bottom of your party. Like you do not need to lead with it. And then basically you could have a strong Pokemon at the front that's capable of one hit KOing all the Pokemon just to make this process a lot faster. So you could have like your Quaquavol at the front that's not being EV trained. And then the Pokemon you are EV training is just wherever else in your party with the power item. And then every time your Quaquavol knocks out Lechonks, which will be super quick because it's really strong, your Pokemon will get those nine HP EVs. So Lechonk is a great Pokemon to farm for HP EVs early game. The next Pokemon that I want to talk about is actually Young Goose, who gives attack EVs. And Young Goose can be found if you go up that path a little bit. Basically, when you see the lighthouse, you go this way. This is the place where you first meet 
Coridon or Miridon. And, or maybe I'm going the wrong way, but but either way, that place where you found um, Coridon or Miridon. Oh you, oh, you go down to the beach. That's right. Yeah, you go down to the beach. Let's just do it just for the sake of, of showing it. Um, okay, there's some Wingles too. I think they give speed. But yeah, here's here's a young goose already. So this this place, Inlet Grotto, has a lot of young goose or young geese. So this could be a very good place for you to, to EV train attack EVs if you're looking for that stat. And again, this is another early game spot. And just every young goose you see, battle it, knock it out, and you're good to go. All right, I had to fly, ba fly back here to get back over here to show you the next Pokemon. For defense, the best Pokemon to knock out early game is... Tarantula, which is another Pokemon that is very common in this early route. And you can, every every Tarantula you knock out gives you defense EVs. So again, oh, and, and I didn't say this either. So basically, if you're holding the power items and you knock out a Pokemon that gives one EV, so for example, if I have a Pokemon with the power weight, which gives plus eight HP EVs, and I knock out a Lechonk, with, which is one HP EV, Every Lechonk you knock out will give you nine HP EVs. So basically at that point, you'll need to knock out, I believe 28 Lechonks in order to max out your stats. Something else, sorry, I know this is kind of all over the place. Something else I forgot to mention though, is if you go to your Pokemon summary, go to the next page and then press the L button, it'll show you a Pokemon's EVs right there. And you'll see if, it, if the stat is sparkling, that means that you've maxed out the Pokemon's EV in that stat. Also, if the, if the kind of coloration of the stats, if that, if that makes any sense, are bluish, that means you have maxed out your Pokemon's EVs and you cannot, EV, you cannot give it any more EVs. So th for example, my, my Tinkaton, it's the, the little arrow or the little line that's pointing to attack is yellow. Whereas if you look at these Pokemon, the the kind of like, I don't know, color of the area that's pointing to the attack and speed is bluish, which means that these Pokemon have max EVs already. And then this Pokemon does not have max EVs, if that makes any sense. Um, I hope that makes sense. Anyway, so Tarantula is for defense and also Spe uh, Scatterbug, not Spupa. Scatterbug is another Pokemon in this route that will give you defense. And those are also pretty common. The next stat is special attack, and I actually don't think there are any Pokemon that spawn in this early route that give special attack. However, if you go past the lighthouse to, to that first Pokemon Center, um, I would show it here, but I, I want to just stay in this area so I don't have to keep going back and forth. Um, I think it's called uh, Los Platos, so the Pokemon Center, um, which again is, is coming up after you get to the lighthouse. You just go straight down there. Basically, Psyduck is a Pokemon that gives special attack EVs, and Psyduck is very common in this area, obviously along the water. So in this, in this water river, whatever you want to call it, and then this pond, anywhere there's water, and even places where there are not water, Psyduck is abundant and Psyduck gives you special attack EVs. I believe Houndour also gives you special attack EVs. And since I just showed you when I was battling Young Goose, there were some Houndours in that cave. So you can knock out Houndours, I believe for special attack EVs as well. So those are a couple Pokemon that give you special attack that you can find in the early game. Next, we have special defense, which luckily I'm already right here next to the little guy who gives you special defense EVs. And that is Hoppip. Hoppip is also very common in this first area. So once again, if you're holding the Power Band, I believe, which is the one that gives you plus eight special defense EVs, every Hoppip you knock out will then give you nine special defense EVs. And finally, we're looking at speed EVs. I saw one of them earlier. I can't, I can't find it anymore though, but Fletchling is a Pokemon that does commonly appear on this route and it will give you one speed EV as well. Also another Pokemon that's a little harder to find. It's a little bit more rare, although it is in this route, um, so it's decently common enough, is Pommy. Pommy will also give you speed EVs. I think Pommy might be a little further up, but either way, like I, I've run into a lot of Pommies in that area where those palm trees are. But either way, Pommy and Fletchling are two Pokemon that will give you speed EVs in this area. Also Fido, oh, here's Pommy. Yeah, there's Pommy, cute. It's not shiny, unfortunately. He's a disappointment. Um, and then also Fido, which is located in the same area as Psyduck. I'll, I'll just kind of go ahead and show you that area now, just 
just so you can, uh, you know, see for with your own eyes. Um, Fido is another Pokemon that gives you speed EVs. So, yeah, those, you have a lot of options. Yeah, this is South Province Area One, and again, here's a Psyduck. So that's where you. This is where you can find Psyduck for special attack EVs. And then, at some point, I will find a Fido as well. Fido are also very common in this area. Um, I believe Iglybuff gives HP EVs. Yeah, there's Fido, and Fido gives speed. So yeah. So that's basically the, the the big area for you to EV train your Pokemon. Like I said, each Pokemon in that area gives you just one EV of its respective stat, which means with the power, with the appropriate power item, you will need to knock out 28 of those Pokemon to max out that stat. If you find an area where it, you have a Pokemon that gives you two EVs of a certain stat, then at that point you will get 10 EVs per knockout, which means you will only need to defeat 25 of that Pokemon, plus you'll need to find two other EVs of that set. So for example, um, Flamigo gives two attack EVs, and if I knock out 25 Flamigos with the power item, with my Pokemon holding the power bracer, I will get 250 attack EVs, and then at that point, in order to max out my stat, I will need to get two more EVs, which I can get by knocking out another Flamigo, so technically 26, or the feather items, these are items that are also found all over uh, the region on the ground, the sparkling areas on the ground. These items give you one EV of their respective stat for each feather. So if you find a lot of these, these can actually really help you too. You know, if you are if you have enough money to buy, two, uh, to buy 25 of a certain vitamin, that's 250 EVs. And then you can just use the feathers to kind of give it the last two. Or if you want to make it quick, you can go, you know, knock out... 25 Flamigo, or, yeah, sorry, 25 Flamigos to get 250 attack EVs and then just give your Pokemon two muscle feathers to, to give it give it those final two. Um, yeah, so that's how to EV train in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Now quickly, I'm also just gonna run through other kind of areas and tips and tricks. In general, just kind of Pokemon that give you either Pokemon that spawn frequently together in groups or Pokemon that appear frequently that give you two EVs of a respective stat. And again, you might find a better list on your own or you might find an area that works better for you, but this is just what I've found to be, to be helpful for me. So for HP EVs, Lechonk is probably the best because it's very common in the early stages of the game. And there are certain areas, I think near the first, near the bug gym, where Lechonk will spawn with its evolution Oinkalone, and Oinkalone will give you two HP EVs. So Oinkalone is also pretty common in Paldea, so anywhere you can find Oinkalone, you know, usually it'll spawn, there'll be a lot of them spawning, and sometimes it'll spawn in, in packs with Lechonks as well. I'm having trouble finding that, that bug gym for some reason, but either way, um, in the first, in the early areas with the near the bug gym, near the grass gym, I think definitely the grass gym as well. I remember there was a lot of uh, Oinkalones in that area as well. So again, Oinkalone will give you two HP EVs, and it's pretty common near the grass gym and near the bug gym. For attack EVs, I found Flamigo to be really good. Flamigos also decently common in the early stages of the game, and I found I think it was this area over here, South Province area one. Or near the water, a lot of Flamigos spawn, so you could kind of knock out 25, I would say, decently quickly. Another area that I found to be really useful, which is a little bit of a later game area, I mean, you could get here whenever you want, but the Pokemon in this area are really high level, so like, like in the late 30s or, or 40s, so you want to be careful with that. But this is Alfernada, which is one of the highest level gym leaders in the game, if not the highest level, I believe. And once you're at this Pokemon Center, you basically just go up to this grassy field here. This, I think, is the best place to EV train for attack because a lot of Pokemon that spawn in this area give you two attack EVs. There's Lockix, uh, the evolved form of Nimble, which gives you two. There's Lycanroc, which gives you two. There is uh, Banit, which spawns at night, which gives you two. So a lot of good options for att attack EVs here. For defense EVs, I would say to go to Zapapico, or in general, just go to the this area, East Province Area 3, which is a big, giant, like, barren, kind of deserty area. Kind of a desert. It's like a big dirt lot. <laughs> a lot of Pokemon that spawn in this area will give you defense EVs, but what I found to be pretty common is 
Roly-coly will often spawn very frequently in this area alongside its evolution, Karkul. Usually they'll spawn in groups and that'll give you a chunk of defense EVs right there. So this area right here, there's a lot of Pokemon with defense EVs that you can defeat for, for EV training. But again, I think Roly-coly is probably the best bet and it's very common here. For special attack EVs, I would say basically almost anywhere at night <laughs> in the in the big grassy areas, anywhere you can find Haunter and Ghastly because both of those will give special attack EVs and obviously Haunter will give you two special attack EVs. So I, I think I found Haunter and Ghastly or rather Haunter in particular near the um, bug gym, which... Or, or the grass gym. I'm, I'm getting them confused, but again, I think they're they're common in both places. I guess it doesn't show me anymore, does it? Oh no, yeah, it doesn't show the gym leader's picture anymore, I guess, because I defeated them. But in this area where there's grass, um, I think it's actually more, more around uh, going this way. When you go up this hill in the grassy area, there's a lot of haunters and ghastlies that spawn at night. And then um, in this area as well, at night, you'll see a lot of haunters. Now, if it's not night in your game, again, you can just stick to where I showed you where there's all these Psyducks. But if it is night, yeah, haunter's your best bet. And then for special defense, I think Hopip is still gonna be your best bet. There are a lot of areas where Hopips will spawn, I think again near the, gra uh, sorry, the bug gym. And finally, we have speed. And speed, there's a lot of good Pokemon, a lot of common Pokemon that spawn that give you speed. Flittle, I found to be pretty common. It gives you one speed EV. I, I found it all across the map in a lot of different locations. And if you ever encounter its evolved form, Espathra, I think it's called, that one will give you two speed EV. So there's a lot of areas, especially towards the higher level places where you can find Espathra just kind of roaming around. This area here where I showed you all the attack Pokemon also has a lot of Espathra. Espathra. And then finally, um, for, for speed, Fletchling and Fletchender also spawn together in packs and they will give you speed EVs as well. So that is how to EV train. I know that was a really extensive guide. I hope this video helped you out. That is how to EV train in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, all the best methods that I've found, of course. It's possible you found better ones. If you did, let me know in the comments what you what you think are some of the best areas to EV train for certain stats because this is a huge world and even if I've explored every corner of it, maybe I've missed certain Pokemon that spawn at, in certain locations or certain criteria or something. So you might be helping me out. You might be helping other people out by commenting below and letting us know where you found. But I hope this video helped you out. Please leave a like if you enjoyed and if it helped you out. I, I worked really hard on this video and it was fun to make. So I'd appreciate it if you showed me some love by critical hitting that like button. Also, please subscribe for more, more Pokemon Scarlet and Violet content. I'm just gonna keep making more videos. I'm just having, I'm, I'm having so much fun with the games. I know that there's a lot of issues with the games, but I'm just loving these games so much. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you soon.